The following FizzCast is about the sphere which is attached to a wall. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. The question asks us to find two things about the system. One is the tension, which is in the rope attached to the sphere. And secondly, the force that the frictionless wall exerts on the sphere. We're given some other additional information. We're told the sphere's mass, 0.85 kilograms. We're told its radius is 4.2 centimeters. We're told it's held in place by a massless rope and that the wall is frictionless and that the center of the sphere is located eight centimeters below the point of attachment. First of all, we can interpret the problem by realizing that this is a static equilibrium problem. The ball is not accelerating or rotating, therefore the sum of the forces, which are vector quantities, must be zero, and the sum of the torques must also be zero. We already have a pseudo-real diagram describing my system, so what's important is to now draw in the forces at the places where they're being exerted. Although gravity acts on all parts of the sphere, we can consider the weight force to act through the center of mass of this extended object, which is in the center of the sphere. So we can draw our weight force, mg, acting straight down through the center. We can also see that the rope is attached to the sphere and there's a tension force which acts back along the rope. What governs the tension of the rope is that it must have a vertical component, which we can call Ty, which is have the same magnitude as the weight force. They're the only forces which are acting in the vertical direction since the wall is frictionless. In addition, we can see that there's also going to be a horizontal component of the tension force acting to the left, which means that there must also be another horizontal force acting for equilibrium. It's going to be the normal force, which acts at the wall where it's in contact with the sphere. The normal force from the wall pushes on the sphere, and it has the same magnitude as the component of the tension force in the horizontal direction. So they're the three forces that we have to deal with. And it's important in a statics problem to make sure that those forces are drawn on the places where they act. Um, so that's the development of the problem. Mathematically, the way we can treat this is to look at the uh, sum of the force components. So I should first of all put on a coordinate system. Let's take x going to the right and horizontally and y being vertically. So then we can look first of all, let's say the sum of the forces in the y direction, for instance. There we have the tension component in the y direction, Ty, minus the weight force, because it's acting downwards, that's why it's negative. And the sum of those two forces must equal zero, because there are no other forces acting in the vertical direction. We also have the sum of the forces in the x direction, here we can say that the normal force acts in the positive x direction. The co horizontal component of the tension force, Tx, acts to the left, so it's negative. The sum of those two forces must be zero as well. They're the only forces acting horizontally. And we also have a third equation, or the sum of the torques must be equal to zero. And so, importantly, it's the sum of the torques about some particular pivot point and a good pivot point to take here, I think, is going to be the uh, center of the sphere. Just to remind ourselves, what is uh, the torque? It's given by the cross product between the position vector, which goes from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, crossed with the force. So we can see that the torque created by the weight force is going to be zero because the distance from the where the force is acting to the point of rotation is zero. We can also see that for the normal force, the position vector r for the normal force, which goes from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, well that position vector is actually parallel or anti-parallel, I should say, to the normal force. So the angle between them is 180 degrees. And so the cross product there, if you've got vectors which are parallel or anti-parallel is zero.
Similarly, we can say that the vector which describes the position of where the tension force is being applied, RT, that's also parallel to the tension force T, so the cross product there is also going to be zero. So the sum of the torques is zero uh, because of the way these forces are being applied. So we don't get any information about uh, what we're trying to find, the tension force or the normal force from the wall from the torque equation, so we can go back to these, uh, some of the forces in the x and y directions. So let's see if we can solve for part A. Since we know the, um, the weight force, we can write down that Ty is equal to mg. Now of course Ty is the component of the tension force. We really want to find what the tension is, what T is, how can we relate those? Well, we just need to know what this angle theta is, and then we can write that Ty will be equal to T times the cosine of theta is equal to mg. Therefore, my tension is equal to mg divided by cosine of theta. So some numerical values here. I've got 0 0.85 kilograms times by 9.8. And then the cosine, what's the angle theta? I can get that by realizing that there's a similar triangle here. I'm given information about theta. I can see that the uh, length of the adjacent side of the similar triangle is L. The length of the opposite side here is R. So I've just drawn out the triangle which goes from the point of attachment to the center of the sphere and to the wall. And so therefore theta is going to be given by the inverse tan, tan minus 1 of R over L. So that's equal to the inverse tan of at 4.2 centimetres divided by 8 centimetres. Importantly, you don't have to convert any units here because the centimetres cancels with the centimetres. The ratio should be a unitless number. And if you use your calculator for that, you'll find that's uh, 27.699 uh, degrees. So using that angle down here, 27.699, and that's 9.40 uh, newtons. So we have sold for the tension in the rope for part B. So we can write down that the normal force is equal to the horizontal component of the tension force Tx. That's going to be given by the magnitude of the tension force times the sine of the angle theta. And we know what those things are. From above we've got 9.4 newtons times the sine of my angle 27.699 degrees. And that gives the normal force is equal to 4.4 Newtons, where we found the answer for part B. So let's do a little bit of assessment. If my mass of my sphere was to get larger, then what would happen is that uh, my weight force would get bigger. This would mean that my tension force would also have to be larger. That seems to behave itself here. As my weight force gets larger, my tension force would have to be larger. But in order for this to be in equilibrium, that would also mean uh, that my horizontal component of my tension force would be increasing, so my normal force should also be uh, increasing. My normal force should be proportional to my weight force as well. So I can see I could rewrite that my normal force would also be equal to mg sine theta divided by cosine theta. So as my weight increased, my normal force would also have to increase as well.